30. Should be 30. <laughs> it's fine. I can uh, five the, the first talk today in this room is going to be uh, about code reviews, I guess. Um, and uh, Dennis uh, told me that he he moved uh, f he, uh, he moved to Germany from uh, Ukraine. Ukraine, and he had to leave all his Legos there. So he's waiting for his child to become old enough that he can like get him presents, you know, presents for, like typical uh, parent <laughs> like parent presents, I like getting some Legos so you can play with them again. Um, so enjoy the talk by Dennis. Please give him a warm uh, round of applause. All right. Uh, hi, everyone. So my name is Denis, and uh, I have some experience in software engineering. I've seen some really amazing stuff, some really crazy things, uh, but I'm still uh, really open uh, to see something new. And uh, now I moved to Solaris Bank, uh, work there as an engineer. Um, we're building a card transaction processing, so um, whenever you use uh, payment cards and if they have a nice Solaris logo that you can see on the slide, then uh, they hit our backends and um, some magic happens. Um, but um, that's it about me and uh, let me give manage some expectations because, uh, well, um, it, it really feels like it's... Uh, Maybe have, like be, being a first one uh, presenting, um, uh, it's uh, kind of uh, maybe a bit stressful, but uh, it's fine uh, because I like to share my experience. And uh, indeed, it's based on my own experience. And uh, as it was mentioned before in the um, uh, and really nice presentation uh, yesterday, this one also non-technical and completely subjective. Um, you can use all my advices by your own risk, but also, all stunts done by me. I'm standing here and I'm alive. So maybe it worked. So what kind of code do I review? Um, well, um, I've been reviewing some open source code, but usually I work in some, I worked in some consultancy and product companies. And right now in Solaris, we have pretty different teams and they are all amazing. And uh, we have different products and they are like Legos that I left behind in Ukraine. Um, but, uh, well, unlikely Legos, we should arrange them somehow. And they are interconnected and they should work together. Uh, so, and sometimes there is an urgency. Um, in any product companies, there are some uh, deadlines or some uh, deliverables you need to do. And um, yeah, well, usually it's also like always no pressure. But uh, hey, we need to build something cool and nice and, well, earn all the monies because we're a bank. Um, now, um, why do I review the code? Why doing it at all? So I would like to get some new knowledge. I would like to know what's going on. Um, sometimes people don't uh, ask me to review the code. I'll just go and uh, look at the pull request because I like to see new stuff and experience new things. Also, uh, some people would ask me to review the code and then um, I can learn from them. They can learn uh, from my comments and overall it's a part of uh, coaching uh, people. Um, finally, um, we can discuss some of the proposals or some of ideas asynchronously and close to the code and um, it's also visible for everybody. Uh, Finally, um, it's uh, about keeping code base healthy and healthy, whatever, um, whatever means to you. Uh, could be following um, conventions or uh, having everything covered by tests or just having all the spaces set uh, right and instead of tabs. Yeah, and finally for Solaris Bank, unfortunately it's a regulatory requirement to have at least one engineer review the code. So literally, no one can push code to master directly. Uh, it's uh, like protected and uh, literally whenever you push an X commit to pull request addressing some feedback, it would dismiss reviews and you need to review every, all the thing again. Well, maybe you review just last commit, but uh, sometimes you need to review all the thing again. So um, we, and, uh, we build a lot and uh, we move forward fast 
and uh, uh, sometimes it's really uh, um, hard to uh, get uh, some time to write code. It's rather um, reading what other people did. Also, um, if you uh, remember the last slide, uh, there are much more companies, and we use this model of um, like a model of uh, open source, where we um, uh, where different teams can go to the project uh, your team responsible for, and fork it, and make changes, and create a pull request, and uh, ask to review. And sometimes they would like to build something that is somewhere in your uh, roadmap in a year or two, but not right now, but they need it now. So they will do it. That's great, but then one needs to spend some time to review it and, uh, well, uh, do it nicely. Now, um, I developed some principles uh, of code review so I can uh, kind of uh, have a peace of mind and not not worry and uh, like follow them. So first principle, it's coming from product companies. The code brings value in master, deploy it to production. Unless there is a proof of concept and this code will never be merged because we would like to discuss a new thing. For example, I don't know, using monads or um, um, trying pattern matching or just refactoring the uh, bloody algorithm of um, um, releasing the reserved money on a payment card, uh, which, is, uh, which looks powerful but scary. Now, uh, no software is perfect. There is always some things to improve and there are always uh, um, uh, things to uh, follow up. Uh, fine, like, uh, contributors deserve respect no matter who they are, no matter the maturity, no matter uh, time in company, no matter background. Uh, people bring code, they do something nice, and they deserve respect. Um, I would think twice before posting a comment. Doesn't mean that I will not post any comments. It means that I will read it. I will think what the person will think or like will try to put myself in the uh, contributor's shoes when uh, he or she will read that. And uh, time is precious. And going back and forth with uh, long discussions over the pull request sometimes is painful, especially when you have time, or maybe you have ti all time in the universe, and the other team has time till lunch, because after lunch they have a sprint review and they want to show something. And, well, code is not merged yet. Finally, no matter how bad code, in my opinion, there should be, there is something always good. I just need to look really hard and really careful to find it out and appreciate. So let's maybe look closer. So um, the code that uh, goes to production, well, for sure, uh, I need to say that uh, because that's uh, um, how I would do it. And uh, that's how it should be done, in my opinion. Um, there should be acceptance criteria covered in tests. And uh, we, we do test-driven development, we do behavior-driven development, we do black box testing, but still I would go, I would just scroll down to tests and read tests first and look, uh, then I would go and look at the implementation. Implementation could be refactored, uh, but if I can understand tests and they, and they green, then great, uh, I can go next thing. I will never ask questions about syntax and style. I wouldn't say, hey, can you align that hash? Hey, can you align those um, uh, blocks in let in R spec? Because that's, uh, there, there should be an automated tool for that, Rubocop, for instance. If the project has no Rubocop, I will just note that, and perhaps we will address it later, and okay, we'll have to have this uh, pull request for 2,000 lines that says Rubocop adjustment, uh, but hey, then no one will uh, be feeling unhappy um, seeing my comments saying, hey, can you align stuff? It should be done by machine. No one is being offended by machine, right? Um, I would 
merge pull request right away when it's good. So um, as, as you um, now know, uh, code review is a regulatory requirement. But um, no regulator requires you to wait for a contributor to merge the code. And because we have continuous delivery and continuous integration as a basis of that, I can just merge the thing and it would go to some extent to uh, staging and testing environments. Um, so I would just do it. And um, uh, this is something that brings me a lot of joy because uh, when someone contributed code to a project and I can merge it, then it makes it better. And uh, that's what I do right away. Well, for sure, if someone says like, hey, can I merge it instead of you? Can you stop merging my pull request? For sure, I will, I will back off, but uh, I just like merging stuff. Finally, um, I will always, uh, when, I all, when I have feedback, I will create a pull request to original one. So let's say I would like to explain some ideas how thing could be done better and uh, in terms of uh, architecture, in terms of composition, and maybe I have time. So I wouldn't write a long uh, comment and uh, like long like wall of code. Instead I would just for like fork or like create a branch out of the pull request branch and uh, do some changes. And on GitHub you can do it easily. You just uh, can uh, click in some UI and just use kind of live coding um, uh, or like doing it locally. Uh, but then we change roles change because from a reviewer, I'm becoming a contributor to contributor's code. And the contributor should review my code and make like a sub PR or not. And that's where uh, it gives uh, like, that's where it gives uh, some um, control and uh, the, to a um, contributor to uh, say, okay, I, I, I would like to do that, or no, I don't like to do this. But again, well, <laughs> when, I have, when I have time, uh, because sometimes it's uh, uh, like uh, not, not enough. Um, finally, every of my approval is a trade-off between no value right now and added technical debt. Well, sometimes if we talk about mathematics, sometimes added technical debt is negative when people improve things that were hairy and we indeed have some hairy things here and there because we're just a normal company like everybody else. Um, and yeah, we don't build uh, perfect software. We build software that runs and uh, makes people happy. So I will comment on the on most important things. I wouldn't comment on some things like, hey, here you use map, but you could use inject, or hey, you can use something, um, you could uh, you use each, and here you can use map, something like that. If I see that there are some things that could be improved, in my opinion, for architecture, composition, um, maybe, um, I don't know, like um, I had, uh, I was a bit confused by naming, so I wouldn't go there. Um, it looks like a C language compiler that would stop on the first error blow up and then you don't know what will happen then. Um, but I try to structure my feedback in a way that uh, I will talk about uh, like bigger picture first, and then I would go into details. Because if we agree with the contributor about bigger picture, those details may disappear. They will never. Um, um, they, they will. They may not uh, appear again. Sure. Um, maybe um, we're losing an opportunity to uh, learn or teach some someone something new. Um, but uh, on the other hand, there would be plenty of opportunities because we develop every day, multiple times a day. Right. Now. Um, I will um, get mark my. Um, feedback saying like, hey, here is a minor thing you can, um, I like was that confused me. Uh, hey, here is the thing um, where you can uh, use this pattern. But actually, your feedback, uh, your, your pull request is uh, totally mergeable. And I will approve it. So person can decide whether he or she wants to go further and uh, address my feedback or 
just merge it because there is a time pressure. And uh, because I do not know what kind of time pressure a contributor has, I cannot determine whether uh, things I would like to improve in the pull request are so important than, uh, I know, that person needs to sit maybe in the night. We don't practice that, but still, uh, like, pushing people to, like, work over hours because, you know, like, uh, grumpy Dennis doesn't um, uh, like uh, to approve my pull request and gives me more and more feedback. No. Um, and therefore, I would say heresy, but sometimes I don't refer to this Boy Scout rule when you, which says you need to leave the place in a better condition than it was before. That's a great rule. I really like it. I use it daily. But sometimes it's always a time pressure, peer pressure, and uh, you just say, okay, you know, like place is not in a worth, to, uh, worth conditions. So uh, we just uh, have it as is and then um, open up a ticket, uh, create a to-do task, whatever, to get it, get it better, uh, because we identified it. Um, sometimes pull requests are getting merged, and uh, as you know, I'm a, like, I, I'm a curious person, so I would go there and have a look. And sometimes I will ask questions on a closed pull request, which seems strange, right? Like, you know, like, party's over, um, everybody left, and then, like, hey, like, let's party more. Um, it has two outcomes. Sometimes people go and comment because they subscribe to notifications. Um, sometimes they don't. Um, and again, I can, um, as I mentioned before, I would appreciate stuff that I learned. So sometimes after the party is over, I would put thumbs up, or I would say, "Hey, I like, I really like your uh, your contribution. This gives, uh, this is awesome." Um, I hope people would read that. Um, if they haven't, well, um, now you know. Um, if there is some feedback that I would like to be addressed, then I would just uh, go uh, and uh, talk to person uh, directly, maybe in two days to give some time for a contributor to like, you know, like go through the mailbox and uh, read the comments and uh, give a chance to like prioritize it. Um, yeah. Um, well, talking about people, I have several assumptions. So first of all, the contributor did the best thing she or he could. And people don't do mistakes multiple times on purpose. Uh, finally, I don't have a full context. I don't know what were the limitations. I just got the solution. There is a a multitude of uh, ways how it could be solved. And if I would start asking, like, why don't you do this? Why don't you do that? Haven't you done, haven't you thought like that? Well, um, in many cases, people would be just feeling unhappy because they went through all of that and they discarded it. And <coughs> they don't want to get back there because they were, um, like, um, Fa like false uh, false paths, and they they took one. Um, also, it means that I can be wrong in my judgments. Um, so uh, I would use benchmarks if I would say, "Hey, this thing is slow." Well, slow is not an engineering term. It means that uh, under certain conditions, it I like it could be faster, but how faster? And <laughs> if I would take a solution and say, well, it's like 50% uh, um, faster, maybe it's just not worth uh, changing the whole thing uh, because it's not uh, significantly faster. Uh, the other thing is our metrics. So code coverage, we have it, code quality, uh, we have it uh, locally. Um, and for sure, tests are green and uh, all gems and audited and stuff like that. and. Uh, I would I would refer to that when I would say hey you haven't covered this test case like this case uh, by tests I will just go generate a test coverage report and show that hey it's it's not covered and uh, how about covering it and uh, for sure I would ask I will always ask questions to understand the full context if I'm uh, um, if I'm um, confused 
I wouldn't just uh, like say no, this is this is totally wrong. No, like I have I have um, like um, no idea what you were working on, but um, I don't like it. Um, by the way, uh, have any one of you got those comments as a only comment in a pull request? No, so amazing! Like I was I was totally unlucky because here's the story. On a first day in the other company I worked before, I got a pretty Mr. Hanky as a comment to my pull request. Although it was an amazing piece of engineering work, refactoring a core gem that um, the platform was relying on and making it much better. And then I had Mr. Hanky. And then I asked WTF. And they, they had more Mr. Hankies and uh, more comments saying that like, my, my, th this pull request is cheating. So I did, I did uh, the only thing I could do. I closed the pull request, did the branch, breathed in, breathed out many times, went home. Next day I came to the office, went to the person who did me, like uh, sent me this Mr. Hanky, sat together, and this person actually explained why it's not the right way to do. And it was valid. I would agree to that. I don't like. I didn't like Mr. Henke, but <laughs> when when we sit set together, it was really clear why I shouldn't do it and why I actually wasted my whole like work day. And indeed, I would put myself Mr. Henke too, and maybe f like face palm. Um, so uh, let's talk about commenting and being clear. And uh, first of all, uh, can you read it? What does it say? Yeah, it says emoji is not a language. Yet. So what I do, I would use plain English. Very simple English. I'm not a native speaker. And this is actually good because I operate. My, my English is very simple. I don't have a like, lot of adjectives. And uh, therefore, they can be confused, confusing for my uh, for contributors. Now. I would put some emojis too because emojis are fun and I really like them, and uh, they actually give more well color to uh, my like my, my comments. But well, use English first. I um, if I would uh, not have time, I would provide a sample code. I wouldn't rather say, "Hey, you can use this method. Just go and uh, learn about I don't know like uh, some." Um, the way how you can use iterators, I would just bring some sample code, uh, several lines. And uh, when I would finish a reviewing pull request, I would put a summary. So uh, now GitHub has a really great feature of uh, code review, like uh, when everything is together and your summary is on top, and then you like approve or you ask for more feedback, like for more changes. But I'm kind of an old school guy who just goes and clicks on the lines and less like leaves the comment uh, on the line. Um, so I need some recap at the end. And that's where I say, OK, you know, I left 20 comments, but they are all minor. You can merge it right now if you need to, if you want to iterate over any of them. Yeah, well, um, go for it. Um, finally when iteration on the comments take a lot of time, uh, and time is precious, precious um, then I will uh, go and uh, talk to person. So when I comment, it's also my responsibility now to clear it out. And uh, when a person starts um, like a discussion, this is really great, but um, we in, in our company, for instance, uh, we are not yet uh, so remote uh, that we're in different time zones. So usually people are either in the same open space or uh, just uh, as far as you can uh, call over the Zoom. So I will take maybe 10 minutes. And like 10 minutes of two people can uh, resolve a really, really long uh, going conversation. Because um, when you talk, you uh, use, I think, 80% of nonverbal language. So uh, like m having gestures, having uh, mimics um, on your face and everything else. Now, uh, for sure, I would put a recap of what we discussed. 
because uh, everything that happened offline will stay offline, but uh, when other people would come and um, talk and uh, ask um, why, why this or that happened, uh, they would need to have some recap and understand why we actually decided to merge it or why we decided to close this uh, great and awesome pull request. Talking about great and awesome, I'm striving to be positive. No matter how bad code is, in my opinion, there is something good. Look there and uh, I find what to appreciate. Actually, I start by going through the code and appreciating stuff and saying, okay, like this is great, this is awesome, I really like that. And oh, I learned, like today I learned uh, something new. And then I would get with some feedback maybe, uh, like constructive, maybe not. So, uh, to wrap up, I'll do it better myself, doesn't really scale. I've seen stories when people were having contributions and then rewriting them themselves because they were kind of the owners of the code base and it doesn't scale. Uh, we're our, my, my, my team is growing and we don't have people and if I will uh, start uh, saying, hey, um, this is not good enough, I will rewrite myself, I would either work nights and days, which I don't want to, uh, or we will be just very slow. The other thing is uh, I would act as the same way as I would expect other people act with me. And if I don't, if, I, if, I'm, if I'm an asshole, then it's totally fine that people, other people be asshole to me, but I don't want to. So, what do you think? What is your uh, experience with uh, code reviews? I think we have like five minutes or so. Actually, four. Yeah. Anyone want to join in? Um, hi, I really enjoyed the talk. So um, let's say you have this pull request from, let's say, the owner of the code base, like you mentioned, and you realize there's some errors and some, like, maybe they're not following the architecture pattern or the design pattern, and you leave some feedback. Uh, but the feedback is not well received. How would you handle that situation in the, like, as a code reviewer? Yeah, uh, good question. Uh, so I will go and uh, talk to that person. Uh, if that contributor doesn't want to talk to me, I would create a pull request against that pull request. If the contributor doesn't want to merge it, then I will ask, well, I would, I would see whether there is a no like time pressure or person wants to do like that. Actually, if I created a pull request against the other pull request, I can merge the first one. And if the team I work for will like own this project, then we will just merge another one because we can merge other stuff as well. Uh, as long as it doesn't break the tests, the first contributor put, then it's totally fine. And uh, it uh, doesn't, doesn't really matter. Well, for sure, conflicts are better to handle personally talking to people face to face in some unofficial atmosphere. Maybe taking that person for a beer, why not? If it answers the question. Okay, okay so from uh, what you said to us, uh, it becomes clear that um, your whole process in, in your company is centered uh, around uh, as in Kronos, um, um, collaboration so um, you are uh, doing code reviews of on your own and uh, leaving comments in github and then you said uh, those comments can go on and uh, back and that can go forth um, I would like to know your opinion um, about pair programming because I think all of the goals that you want to achieve uh, with uh, code reviews can be achieved with pair programming too uh, and in a much uh, more concise way or thereby transporting much more knowledge and uh, much more detail. So um, what do you think about it and are there special reasons uh, for you or your company why you opted against pair programming? Uh, great comment and uh, thanks for raising that. Um, actually this is uh, something that I kind of not put on the slides. We do pair programming, we do it all the time um, 
The tricky thing here is this regulator, because although we're a fintech company with a banking license, for regulator, we're the bank. And for regulator, they don't know that there were two or three people working on the same code, because in the Git, there you could put, yeah, you could put several names as contributors, but they require to have a code review anyway, no matter how many people wrote the code. Um, so in pair programming, um, I will, well, in pair programming, um, I would use it to, uh, for instance, uh, work together on uh, some of um, uh, feedback. So uh, what I what we usually do when the, when we go face to face to talk about some feedback or improvements, we just uh, jump on a pair programming session uh, because then it's easier to talk about the code when you're like next to the code. Um, yeah, but. Um, Unfortunately, the uh, fact that there was a pair programming session doesn't cancel the reviews. We would like to have no reviews if there was a pair programming. But, but there's an easy impossible. solution to that. In my team, we also we can't merge to master without a GitHub review. But that's easy. If you do pair programming, then one of you two opens the PR and the mm -hmm. other one reviews it in GitHub. It's then it's just clicking a f confirm or acknowledge. Um, four eyes have seen the code. So uh, I don't see that as an obstacle um, that you have to have a formal review in, in, in GitHub. It, mm -hmm. it works well with pair programming. Yeah, well, uh, I, I, would, I would say sometimes it works. Uh, sometimes uh, people would work on their own. Uh, but, uh, well, get a review on uh, something that was done by two people is much easier. Uh, also because both person can answer the question of the third one. Or, well, uh, you just know that there are two, 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 per like two engineers work together, and then you just go through it very quickly, and then you don't have a lot of feedback. So, yeah, well, it works. Not 100%, uh, but yeah, that's, that's a good point. Uh, last question, really quick one, please. Really quick. Uh, so you said at the beginning that you find that you're doing almost like more review now than even writing code. Yeah. Do you have any like tips or suggestions of time management so that you're not reviewing code and letting the code that you're supposed to write like build up or vice versa, writing only code and then just not getting to the reviews and everything piling up there? Um, well, we use Jira to coordinate teamwork and basically, uh, I review more code just because uh, I can do it faster and I can unblock the team to proceed. Uh, also, I prioritize stuff. So I would review code first that uh, my team uh, contributed, and then I would review code from everybody else. Unless some person comes and says, like, hey, we have an expedite, we have a, a demo after the lunch, and it's not yet merged, so can you look at that? then it would kind of be, well, uh, like uh, an expedite for me and I would just jump on it. Uh, but uh, for me, uh, I would prioritize reviewing code over coding just because someone already did it. And there is a small thing just to push it forward and get the thing done. All right, uh, I think we're running out of time. Thank you very much and see you around.